just like looking through a, I don't even know what you call that thing, when you're in school, when it gives you different reflections. Yes, amen. We have to look at God in that area because, see, we box God up so much that we think, oh my shot, that he can only move in one way. But God said, I'm working th things together for my good. So, therefore, the Spirit of the Lord has spoken unto me. This is what God is doing. He said, what he is doing in this time frame now, that God is weaning and pruning the church. He's weaning and pruning. It's a weaning and pruning process. He's cleansing and he's shaking everything that can be shook. Everything that can be shaken, God is shaking. And see, I can remember as a little child, we had a pear tree in our yard. And I wasn't tall enough, and my brothers and sisters, we weren't tall enough to reach the fruit that was on the tree. But we grabbed a hold of that tree and we just began to shake the tree until the fruit fell off to where we can get it. So see, when we're praying unto the Lord, I want you to understand that when God said he's going through a weaning and a pruning process, and we're saying, Lord, give me you, and we're saying, Lord, I want the fire of God, the purifying fire of God, hallelujah, we have to understand that what you are going through right now, people of God, if you're going through anything, if you will continue to allow God to move in your life, you're going to go through because God is shaking you. God is moving you. God is purifying you. Sometimes we can't understand why we're going through, but you're going to go through. You're going to deal with some stuff because you can't go through into the next level, into the next area from where you came. So if you're wondering why am I going through, why am I dealing with this? It has to come, people of God, because if God is purifying you with fire, then he has to get rid of the draw. We're saying, Lord, I'll search my heart and, 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 and create a clean heart in me. But we want to move to the next level. But we have to understand the anointing and the glory that we're asking God for comes with the price, people of God. He don't just download it on you. So I want you to understand as you're going through and as you continue to go through that God is shaking you. He's purifying you. And what he's doing is he's bringing the church into realignment. He's bringing us into a realignment, into his purpose, into his and what God was allowing me to know that what God is doing as a glorious church in this hour, that God is manifesting his remnant church. We're becoming a remnant church. Therefore, you're going through the shaking. I don't know if you heard that song about Ja'Kayla Carter. If it wasn't for the shaking, I never knew how anointed I'd be. If it wasn't for the pressing, I would never know what my destiny would be. But that's what we are going through. So if you want to go and become that glorious church, then we get to go through the shaking. We get to go through the pressing. We get to go through the purifying fire. If you're wondering where you at right now, if you're wondering why I'm going through, if you wonder why you're seeing your family members going through, and if you're that one that's crying, Lord, give me you, nothing else, nothing else, anything else can wait, then you're going to go through some pressing. God wants you to know that he's magnifying his name and he's manifesting himself and that he's purifying you into being the glorious church yes. in this hour. Yes. Romans 11 5 says this, even so then at this present time, also there's a remnant according to the election of grace. Understand all through the Bible, God has always had a remnant. Hallelujah, set apart for his glory. This is nothing new. He's always had a remnant for his plan and his purpose. He had a remnant set aside, hallelujah, for his redemptive plan. And he still has a redemptive plan because it's a people and souls that we're still crying out for. He uses it for his glory. We're just um, um, the, the, the people of God right now in this era that he can use for his glory. And in this present hour, from the foundation of the world, God has chosen you as an elected church to carry out that purpose in that plan in his life, in, in, in your life. So um, as we continue to press on, but we have to, as God is saying unto me as a church, that his people have to have a certain posture. We got to have a certain posture. We want God to work on the inside of us. And that posture before him is to have a heart of repentance 
and saying, Lord, search my heart. God said, your posture has to be yielded. Your posture has to be in a spirit of humility and willing to face the fire of God in his purification. we got to have a certain posture in this hour. We cannot continue to move the way that we've always moved. He said, these are the people who will operate in the power and the anointing of God. These are the, the, the remnant church who will walk in spiritual authority. This remnant church will walk in dominion and shall rule. This remnant church will know where they're seated at in Christ and be able to speak to people and bring them out of darkness and be able to speak to principality and powers in dark places and shut Satan's kingdom down. This is the remnant church that God is raising up in this hour, we are that riveted church, and there is victory in that place. Amen. Amen. God is looking for that one who will stand on his word no matter what he says. No matter what's going on around you. That he's looking for that remnant church. He's looking for that person that will surrender and stand on truth in his kingdom values. These are the people that will carry the glory in this new era. They are the ones, we are the ones that will do this. And what God is doing is he is separating. And I know that we all see this right now. For everyone that is crying out, Lord, Lord, in this day is not of God. Everyone is not of him. So God, what he's doing is separating the weeds and the tails. And I know that scripture talks about he does it in the end time. But you know when the blade of grass grows up together, they look just alike. We can't tell one from the other. We're crying out, God, give me more of you and so forth. But the, but the, um, the tear has, looks like a seed. It looks like the weed. But what happens is they don't want anything of God. They're willing to stay right there where they are. God is calling us to a higher dimension because um, he's calling us to a higher dimension because when he begins to separate, we're going to begin to identify those hollow shata that is not of him because when, when you don't come up higher, that means that you have not been spiritually awakened. And when I tell you that you're going to be able to identify, think about the ten virgins. It was five that all had the lamp but five did not have any oil. So they're walking around with the lamps, but don't have any oil. So God said, you're going to identify. He said, because we as the glorious church, you're going to be glorious because you're going to be shining so bright. People are going to be able to identify you, and he's going to be able to identify those, hallelujah, that's not like him. Thank you, and I want to share also, hallelujah, that God, as we're praying for this pandemic, God is shot, gave me this word, hallelujah. We're praying the, the blood covering over our family. I just want you to hear this, hallelujah. We're praying the blood covering over our family. We're praying protection in this pandemic. And God is just going to do just that. He's going to cover us because the Psalms 91 says that we, as we abide under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. But I want you to hear this, people of God. Hallelujah. As God was downloading and beginning to speak unto me, this is what he said unto me. He said the pandemic will not cease until the church come into alignment. And he said the simple fact that it will not come into alignment um, the, the pandemic will not cease because if God begin to move the way that he wanted to move and heal the land and we, he said what will happen is that we as the body of Christ will go back doing just what we used to do and that's not what God wants us to do we have to understand that when the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt had he not, he could have took them, hallelujah, through the Philistine land, but he took them through the Red Sea for the same reason. He said, if I take them through that way, they'll forget, they'll, they'll remember, and then they'll go back. God does not want us to go back. See, we don't look at ourselves like the Israelites, but we're just like them. God is trying to take us higher, people of God. And that's where God is trying to take us. He's taking us to a glorious church. There's a plan and a purpose for the body of Christ. And God is trying to get, get that time to get us there. But we have to be willing to go with him because he's raising us up, people of God. And as I begin to close, I will share one more scripture.
you with you. It says this in 1 John 3, 5, and 6. He said, this then is the message we, which we have heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. See, we declare that we are the light shining so bright and we are people of God. But there are things I want to say that we have established such a relationship with God. But through the revelation of the Lord, we can tend to lean into darkness in that relationship with God. We tend to lean to our own understanding in the relationship with God. We lean to our own opinions and self-will. But what God is saying is Sunday also in this hour that we have a relationship. But God said, I need to bring you also in fellowship. I need you to come up higher. In order to come up higher, he said, come into fellowship with me. So fellowship brings us into partnership where we partner with the word of God. That brings us and shifts us into alignment. That causes us to walk in spirit and in the truth of God's word. Because there are times when we hear the word but we don't believe the word. But God said that not only are you going to be in relationship, but I want you to be in fellowship. I you to be in partnership with my word. Hallelujah. When God begins to speak a thing, hallelujah, he declares it unto you. I want you to understand, just like the chaos in the land, the word of God comes because God speaks in eternity. He will speak something to you when everything is chaotic around you. We got to hold on to that word and then get to declare it and speak it, even when we don't see the manifestation as of yet. But it will come because the word of God shall not come back for yes. Fellowship, and that's we partnership with Christ, will shift us and help us to bring us out of all types of darkness, out of any type of ungodliness and forms of godliness that denies the power of God to operate in our lives. And I will say this in close. We're moving in gross times. And times is going to get worse in the nation and in the world. And the only light that you're going to be able to see is through the word of God. That will be the only light. Without the word of God, it will be gross darkness to you. And you will not be able to see. You will be lost. So in this, in this hour, God is shandaba sada. As the world grows dark. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6, he said, rise and shine for the light has come. And he said, he, he has put the light on in us. And I look at the nation as a pie. God, it may not be that you're doing all things, but God may give you a slice of that pie just to stand and intercede for one because everybody gets a slice. Hallelujah in Christ. But without the word of God, that is the only light that's going to shine bright in this nation. Amen. 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 for 
all to see so that when they see you, that they will know where to run into. And when they run into, they will find me. They will find the peace that they need. They will find the hope that they need. They will find the kindness and love that they need. He said, but it's not time to be silent anymore. It's time for you to open your mouth up. They're listening for a sound. Heaven is listening for a sound. When you know nothing else, call upon the name of Jesus. Is that in the name of Jesus that the demons tremble? The demons has to bow. The demons has to run when you call upon the name of Jesus. When you are out at work and you have all these situations coming at you and you don't know which way to go, call on the name of Jesus. When you are in school, when you're sitting behind the computers, and it seems like the work that you have to do don't come clearly to you. It's time to call upon the name of Jesus because then God will hear and he will help you. He will heal, he will deliver, and he will set the captives free. This morning God took me to 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 9. And it says, and Absalom met the servants of David. And Absalom rode upon a mule. And the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak. And his head caught hold of the oak. And he was taken up between the heavens and the earth. And the mule that was under him went away. When I think of Absalom, I think and I picture a man who was finely dressed because he was the son of David. And when a father is the king, he will give his son the riches that he has. So when he, when he hits my view, I see him well dressed in the best of clothes. And in order for his hair to be caught in a limb of an oak tree, he had to have a head full of hair. So I pictured maybe dreads. And he had wrapped them up so that they wouldn't take away from his face because he was one who was stuck on his natural looks and the riches and riding the best mule. And I pictured him as one of these people today driving a Tesla, adorned in the best and finest of clothes, untouchable, so it seemed. But there was a war beginning, and David had to send out his armies to fight the war against, who else? His own son and their armies. You see, sometimes when the father loves you, he gives you the riches that he has. But sometimes the son can look at it and he can get jealous, and he becomes hateful and vindictive towards the Father. Yes. And he wants to dethrone the Father. Yes. Because if he dethroned the King, then he would be next in position. So sometimes we can be overtaken by greed. That we can't see the big picture. And David called the armies together. And they wrote, he said, he got them together and he said, I need to send you out but I'm going with you. And they said, no, we need you to stay here. Yes. Because if they take a big number of us, it won't be a big loss. But if they take you, the kingdom will suffer. So David came into agreement and he agreed to stay there. But all the while, one of his men was thinking in the back of his head, he said, if David go, he will not spare his son. He will find mercy for his son, Absalom. So as they went on, Absalom had already decided that if David goes, we'll take him out. And then the army has to bow to us. But he didn't know that they had already told David to stay put. So as they were going out into war, Absalom came up upon one of 
a group of David's men. And he turned on his mule and he rode off. And he came to a big oak tree. And his hair got hung up in the oak tree. And then he found himself dangling between heaven and hell. And today, a lot of people who have gotten caught up, who didn't quite hear what the Spirit was saying to the church, sometimes in this pandemic, it caused people to lose sight of things and get caught up in things. But God is saying to the church, it's time to stop dangling. It's time to stop dangling between heaven and hell. See, if, if Absalom had taken his hair down, he would have failed. And in his mind, I can imagine he was saying, up here, I'm closer to heaven. And I can be saved. But if I take my hair loose and I fall, then I face hell. And a lot of people are finding themselves in the midst of backsliding. And they're thinking, God, I just want to hold on to you. If I can just hold on to you until you clear this earth of this pandemic, God, I know I can be saved. But God is saying this morning, he who has ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He's saying, rise up. Come up higher than me. Come out of your flesh. Get rid of those habits that you don't need. They're only leading to destruction. And if you think that it's only you that is destroying, it's not. Because there is thousands and millions connected to you. So if you keep holding on to that thing that you're playing with, it leads to destruction. He said, choose ye today. Who you will serve? You can't serve two masters. Because you will love one and hate the other. But it's time for the church today to rise up and choose who they will serve. He said, if my people who are called by my name will turn from that wicked way, and humble themselves and pray. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal that land. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You've heard. You have ears to hear. What are you waiting for? It's time to repent. It's time to turn from. We don't want to go to hell. Heaven is our final destination. And oneness with the Father, single vision, ever dwelling in his happiness, his joy, his love, his peace. There's nothing that this world can give you. It's all in him. It's all in Jesus' name. He said, call on my name. I'm waiting for the sound. I'm waiting for the sound. Heaven is opening its portals, and it's waiting for the sound. And once the sound comes, he said, once you pour out your old oil out of the vessels, once you pour out the old oil out of you, once you get rid of everything that's holding you down, he said, then I can pour in my new oil and you can be of heavenly good. You can be who I need you to be in this earth realm in this hour. So he's waiting for you to pour out so he can pour in. You see, when Absalom was found, the man knew, they knew that, because David said, spare his life, bring him back, unhung. But the soldiers knew that if they didn't kill him, that he would be spared by his father. And the father would not hear from heaven on his behalf. He would let him just still go off in his ways. Not knowing that it was his son who was trying to take his life. So they got three swords and they pierced them. And they threw them in a pit and covered them up. So that he couldn't be found. What I'm 
hear the Spirit say is, yield your spirit to me now. Yes, yes. Open up your ears so that you can hear. And he said, once I speak, move. He said, my plans are only of good. They're not to cause you harm. So when you find yourself in the darkness, and even when wicked thoughts come to your mind, you know it's not of me. He said, cast them down and speak my word concerning that issue. He said, I desire to give you the wealth of your father. But first I need to you, I need you to purify your heart. Open your ears and hear what thus saith the Lord as the Spirit speaks to the church. Give ear today.
He's saying, hear my voice. Be obedient to my word. Yeah. When I started school on the 12th of September, I was kind of down. I, was, I didn't want to be there. And I went two weeks with the same heaviness and everything, and I'm like, God, I need a glimpse of my future. I need to know that I'm in your, pur your plan and purpose for my life. So I went on and I said, God, don't let me miss it. Don't let me miss it. When you show it to me, don't let me miss it. And one day I got a new student. And when I drove up to this bus stop, he was jumping for joy. He was just happy. He was just jumping for joy. And when I seen him, my heart smiled. And after that, the spirit lifted up. So he took the spirit of heaviness and he gave me a spirit of gladness. Because he said, you're where I told you to be. And he said, the laughter of the student will daily remind you of my goodness towards you. God is causing us to walk in favor. Favor is running us down. But we cannot get caught up in wanting the riches of this world. Because that will take us away from God. Because God is a jealous God. You can only serve one God. If you chase money, you might find it. But it's going to take you out of the house of God. It's going to take you from worship. It's going to take you from his presence. He said, don't go after money. Come after me, and I will give you the riches of the kingdom. Thank you, God. He said, there will be no lack in your households. He said, even though the world is going crazy and they're saying all manner of evil, he said, come up higher in me, and you will have every need supplied. I've never seen my righteous forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. Yes. So in all things, all. do not covet anything of your neighbors. It doesn't matter if they're looking like they're prospering. What they have is not for you. I have what you need. He said, seek me. Listen to my voice. Do what I instruct you to do and you will walk in in abundance in this season. Don't go after strange things. Don't be led off into naughty things. Mm. Stay focused. Get wow. rid of the habits. Get rid of the habits that are leading you astray. Wow. And you will not get caught up. You will not be dangling from an oak tree trying to decide about heaven or hell. Hear ye what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Choose God.